12 networking mistakes that are derailing your career. Believe it or not, professional networking is a science that, when properly executed, can help you land your dream job and then climb the corporate ladder quickly. It is also an art with its own etiquette, a series of codes and tactics that enables you to rapidly connect with people, immerse yourself in the right conversation and professional group, and gradually expand phone numbers and addresses in your Rolodex. In today's show, we reveal the top 12 networking mistakes you need to know so you don't have to make them. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing marvelous today. I'm doing fantastic, and I hope you are too. And if you are doing marvelous, as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or let's <laughs> go. <laughs> today we want to talk about 12 networking mistakes that are derailing your career, right? And uh, the first mistake is not having a long-term vision for your networking relationships. Let me repeat that. Not having a long-term vision for your networking relationships. Before I even talk about that, let me quickly give a shout out to Freer Phillips in Big Louisiana, Jay Baxter in Rodessa, Louisiana, and Emma Reed in Rose Point, Louisiana. We want to give a shout out to our millions of viewers and listeners in the United States and beyond. Not having a long-term vision for your networking relationships. This is very important because folks, think about it nobody wants to be used right so if you're just going to connect with someone today and not you know contact them uh, after two or three or four years because they may not they were not in the field that you were looking for that will never work when it comes to professional networking you're dealing with people not job titles or companies you're dealing with people and people move on move on across industries jobs and companies so what you want to do is you want to establish a relationship with the individual so that's an important thing so that's a first mistake that a lot of folks make millions of Americans make by not having a long-term vision for their networking relationships don't do that mystic number two forgetting business cards this is as basic as it gets but believe it or not a lot of folks still make that mistake you need to have business cards whenever you are in a professional networking setting you know there is nothing more embarrassing than establishing a good relationship with someone you know and the person is interested and all of a sudden they ask you for your um, you know your business card and you have and you have none and you have to search around for a cocktail napkin to write on it just doesn't it doesn't look good it's not professional so you always want to have extra business cards in your pocket and your wallet whenever you go into whenever whenever you attend a professional event all right mistake number three dressing down this is another one that a lot of folks make no you want to look sharp at networking events you want to mind your manners you want to shake hands firmly you want to stand up straight this is all these things are important and first impression scams right so the very first impression, the very first thing someone sees when they look at you, when they meet you, is how well you're dressed. Is your you know, your attire, your attire, your smile, the body body language, all this kind of stuff is important. All right, so mind your dressing. Number four, mistake number four, not being philanthropic in networking. Now, a lot of folks, a lot of professionals, when it comes to networking, they're always thinking about receiving. But you need to learn to also give, right? You know, I'm not going to quote a biblical passage here to say that you know, if you want to receive, you want to give, you know, give and you shall receive, right? So sometimes the best way to network is through giving. And here, giving has many dimensions. I'm talking about, number one, you want to help others in their networking. So if you're looking to network, you want to mentor younger you know a younger uh, a younger colleague or so, somebody who is inexperienced when it comes to networking you want to mentor and help that person that's a way of giving another way of giving is to to engage in charitable activities at a local nonprofit so you can you know 
you, you know, because think about it. Sometimes the best way to network is through charitable organizations or professional associations. For instance, you could be a board member of a local YMCA or the treasurer of a neighborhood outreach program or the the um, the you know the CIO or the CTO of a local business chamber. So this is very important. A lot of folks always want to network in the industry, but you never know you can you can network outside the industry and still benefit of that uh, still benefit from that networking in your industry. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still having a conversation about the 12 networking mistakes that are killing your career, that are derailing your, 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 your career. And today we want to know them so we can avoid them going forward. I want to quickly give a shout out to Paige Thompson. She is in Tallyville, that's in Delaware. Freddie Grant, Rising Sun, Delaware. I love that city. I love the name. I love the city. Rising Sun, Delaware. And Esme Hamilton in Fenwick Island, that's in Delaware. If you just joined, if you just joined the conversation here, please consider subscribing to our channel, like the content, share, comment below, and give us your your own opinion. You, we want to want to hear from uh, folks who have been networking for years, or months, or weeks, or decades. Let us know. Mistake number five: being arrogant. Now you want to humble yourself during networking, and you want to learn to listen. Learn to listen more than talking. This is very important. You know, a lot of folks when they network, they feel like they have to be part of the conversation. Not always. You know, people love giving advice. People love sharing their, their stories. So it's always a great thing to learn how to listen. And learning to listen can also help you in other facets of life, not just in networking. All right. So don't be arrogant. Be humble. And you will advance very quickly. You will get ahead very quickly. Mistake number six. Waiting until you need professional help before networking. This is a big no-no, folks. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people start networking only after they've lost their jobs, right? So while everything was fine, everything was rosy, they had a uh, they had a sturdy job. They never networked. But guess what? You have to cultivate a relationship before you can use it. Now, if you lose your job and you start networking, it will take you weeks if not years before if not months and years before you can actually reap the fruits of that networking of that relationship so even if you're not on the job market it's always a great opportunity to network you never know right because effective networking means creating contacts and relationship while you're still employed even if you're still employed having a good Base, a good database of networks and contacts can help you get ahead faster, can help you, you know, lend you your dream job. That's all we want, right? Mistake number seven, monopolizing someone's time and hijacking a conversation. Those are another big no-no's, right? At, at a networking event, everyone wants to mingle. So if you're talking to someone, you know, after one, two, three, four, five minutes, you want to leave that person alone so the person can go on and mingle with somebody else unless the person himself or herself has express, expressly you know signal to you that they're interested you want to leave them alone right so this is very important uh, another thing that's also important is to not hijack the conversation especially a group conversation you know some people love it loves some people love attention so much they would go to a networking event and start really like talking over and over and over and over remember earlier i was talking about you want to be able to listen you want to be able to you want to be humble you you don't want to be arrogant so leave the space and leave the floor to somebody else all right number eight being unprepared now being unprepared is another biggie right if you are going to a networking event please do a minimum of preparation I think of a networking event as a mini casual interview it's a casual interview in the sense that you're not expecting a job offer out of it 
it's a mini interview because again you can talk to someone for two three minutes five minutes tops and move on to the next person but it is still important because what you want to do here is you want to impress people and first impression counts and what better way to impress someone at a networking event than by preparing by researching the speakers by researching the attendees by just doing a little bit of homework right this doesn't cost anything it, it probably take you it'll probably take you 30 minutes or one hour but you will reap the benefits in the long run so this is very important all right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still talking about the networking mistakes that you need to avoid because those are derailing your career. I want to quickly give a shout out to our, our millions of fans and listeners in the United States and Canada, specifically right now. Today, we want to give a shout out. We want to acknowledge, rather, Martha Hayes. She is in Arkansas City. This is the beautiful state of Arkansas. Ruben Holm in Prickies, Arkansas, and Rebecca Pearson in Perla, Arkansas. Rebecca, Ruben, and Martha, thank you so much for your contribution and thank you for your, um, your feedback. We really appreciate that. Mystic number nine, not being forthcoming with the truth. In other words, lying. I mean, lying is a, is a big no-no anywhere, not just networking, but in networking, it's even worse. Why? You're lying to strangers. You're lying to people who, 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 who are meeting you for the first time. What worst way to establish a reputation here? Because everything you say can be checked. Don't lie about your contacts in the industry. Don't lie about your acquaintances. Don't lie about your, your, your job experience. Don't lie about people you know or who you, you don't know. Just be yourself and tell the truth. All right? Things like, you know, things like, you know, lies on resumes on your business cards your email address your the university attended your prior experience those things are just they're just killers here so nobody wants that and the thing is just ditch it just be yourself be forthcoming be honest be sincere be uh, you know smile be positive a anything that is that is going that's going to enhance your profile please do all right and most importantly, be in, a, be in a good mood. <laughs> number 10, mystic number 10, using a silly, wacky, or downright slutty email address. That's just a, this is a no-brainer, but pe folks still do it, right? So you want to choose the right email to share. You know, create a professionally sounding email using your first, your real first and last names. I'm not talking about the nicknames that, you know, your, your friends gave you at a happy hour yesterday or last night or, or, or on, no, no. You want to use your real first and last name, the names that your daddy and mommy gave you, all right? So you want to ditch, you want to ditch names like sexy daddy for you at gmail.com or Jenny the weed star, weed here having a connotation with cannabis <laughs> you know Jenny the weed star at uh, yahoo.com or uh, outlook.com no use a professionally sounding email address right again it's all about first impression it's all about creating a long lasting conversation and a long lasting connection here Mistake number 11, not being persistent. Now, persistence, again, is a good quality in all walks of life, not just in networking. So you want to be persistent. You want to you want to be, able, especially if you are going to an event and you want to network with, with specific folks that you have researched. This, this could be a an industry luminary. It could be an influencer or somebody you want to have in your uh, in your Rolodex of um, you know you want you want to have this person's contact. You want to be persistent. Again, the the here you have to strike a balance between being persistent, pursuing something, and you know rel relentlessly and being polite. Right? You don't want to be seen as a stalker here. So this is very important. Being persistent is a good thing. Mystic number twelve having improper body language during conversations now i spoke earlier about 
you know, dressing down, not being a good thing. Here I'm talking about your body language, right? You want to stand straight. You want to smile. You want to have, you know, you want to avoid a sagging posture, a weak handshake, thick smile, right? People don't like that. You want to really, really avoid coming off as standoff, the standoffish. You don't want that, right? You don't want to cross your arms or legs. You don't want to be, you know, rolling your eyes. This is really not good. So ditch all of those behaviors and appear positive, appear confident, have a, a strong handshake, a firm handshake. You want to appear as if you were, you are interested, in which you should, in the conversation because otherwise why, why go to a professional event, a professional networking event if you're not interested in the first place, right? So all of those things you should be, you should be take, uh, taking care of and thinking about the next, time, the next time you go to a professional networking event. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are about to wrap up today's conversation here. I just want to quickly give a shout out again to uh, Catherine Spencer in uh, Natural Bridge, Alabama. And Alfie, uh, a shout out to Alfie Evans in uh, Chachi, that's uh, Alabama, and Lily Lee in Evermans, Alabama. Really love you, Lily, Alfie, and Catherine. Thank you so much for your support. Now, today's conversation was about 12 networking mistakes that are derailing your career. I'm going to quickly uh, list them here. Not having a long-term vision for your networking relationships, forgetting business cards, dressing down, not being philanthropic in networking, being arrogant, waiting until you need professional help, monopolizing someone's time, and hijacking the conversation, being unprepared, lying, using a silly and downright slutty email address, not being persistent, and having improper body language during conversations. This is it, folks. And before before I, I let you go, remember, always arrive early. Ask questions during networking. Don't always talk about work, but rather share your passion. Smile. And most importantly, remember to always follow up. All right? Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Remember, be marvelous.